Well, happy Easter to you. I don't suppose any of us would have imagined at the beginning of this year that we would be celebrating together uh, Easter Sunday uh, like this. Uh, but I'm very grateful that we can be together in this strange way. And I hope this will be of help to you uh, this morning. I found a good poem uh, this week that I thought would help set us on our way with our Easter worship, which I've printed out for you. It goes like this. Ah, my dear Lord, the church is locked, but let my heart be open to your presence. And there, let us make, you and I, your Easter garden. Maybe plant it with flowers and let that heavy stone be rolled away. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power throughout every age and forever. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. And throughout the world, Christians are celebrating now the awesome power of God. And as we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done for us, we can be confident that we will share his victory over death and live with him for all eternity. And so that's why we greet each other so confidently, even at this time on Easter Sunday with the Easter greeting. Now, I'm gonna feel a complete banana doing this uh, without you shouting back at me at home. So I hope uh, you will shout this back. Uh, children getting louder and louder, more and more confident as our heart fills up with Easter hope. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so let's come and prepare ourselves for our communion. It's a spiritual communion this morning. Obviously, we don't have the physical elements, but the Holy Spirit makes Christ present to us wherever we are in the world. And so we pray together. Almighty God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, our first uh, hymn this Easter morning is oh to see the dawn the power of the cross uh, so let's uh, stand jig about uh, recline whatever you want to do but let's sing together
Well, let's uh, reassure one another uh, and ourselves that the power of the cross is at work in our lives and will always be at work in our lives as we come in confession together. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. So I can say to all of us, may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayers. We pray together the collect a special prayer set for Easter Day, we say together. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin but alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. We come now to our Bible reading, uh, which is a really bold proclamation of our Easter hope. And Giles is going to read it for us. The reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 58. And for those of you lucky enough to have a pew Bible, you'll find it on page 1157. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been closed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know about you, but it's been quite a, it's been a week of bewildering contrasts for me. There have been some amazing things happening in the parish with people having um, prayers answered in quite specific ways that you just know that, that is God at work. Um, quite extraordinary. And yet, on the other hand, uh, some of you have lost colleagues to this awful virus that you, and you're grieving deeply. And those, there's, there's huge contrast. I mean, you can see that on a much smaller scale in all the photos that we're putting in to our songs today. Um, there's that real sense of people doing a whole variety of different things because they don't really know what to do with themselves. Uh, someone's birthday, someone's building a garden room, someone's washing the car. Uh, we try and put those as Easter eggs at the end of the uh, recording of the service. But it's all very bewildering and we don't, we don't feel like we're in control. And I, and I was thinking about this earlier in the week and it reminded me of, uh, do you remember those toys that children used to have in the back of the car uh, before they had DVDs built into uh, the car seats? They used to have these toys, these pretend steering wheels and buttons and things, and they'd just spend the whole journey driving, thinking that they were in charge of the car. Poor things, they do this for hours. Completely deluded creatures, uh, poor children. But that suddenly reminded me, that's a, a bit like us 
on planet Earth. Human beings, human life on planet Earth. There we are, most of the time, sitting in the back, steering, thinking we're in control, we're driving, yay us. And it just takes something of the magnitude that we're experiencing at the moment that just reveals, draws back the curtain on that and reveals what is real, what is our true state as human beings. And that is uh, that we're not driving at all. Uh, we are uh, merely those children in the back. But the encouraging thing about today, about Easter Day, is that we know the one who is in control of the car, if you like. We know that we have a God who is in control, who is good, who is loving. And he proves that uh, in the Easter events. You see, when you look at the cross, when you look at the resurrection, you see there a God who is prepared to suffer for us in our place. You see a God who's willing to go through what Jesus went through for you and for me because he loves you shows that whatever grim thing grim things that we're experiencing now and many of us are that cannot be because god does not love us because he did that for us that is the kind of god who is at the steering wheel so i appreciate it. at a time like this we mustn't be triumphalistic there's too much worry there is too much bereavement going on for so many people. But at the same time, we must point ourselves and other people to the great victory of Easter, the great victory of the cross of Christ and his resurrection, because we'd be foolish uh, not to point us to that greatest of all hopes. It's been heartening, hasn't it, to see the amazing act of love and kindness and generosity uh, it's been great to go out there and uh, uh, ring the church bell uh, as everyone's banging their pots and pans at eight o'clock on a thursday when we just appreciate the bravery of the nhs workers uh, the carers the frontline workers and we say thank you and we see what they're doing and we we just are amazed but of course, over the last four or five weeks, we've seen the flip side of humanity as well. We've seen people stealing thousands of face marks from hospital stores. We've seen people trying to make a profit from this crisis. We've seen people deliberately infecting food with their hands or coughing uh, a coronavirus into people's faces as a weapon. We see that selfish side of humanity as well. And it's all too easy to label those as the bad people out there. But of course, that selfishness is inside us too. And that's what Giles was just reading about in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, Paul, uh, normally we read this and uh, I'm talking about the 500 witnesses that saw Jesus rise from the dead who were still alive when the letter of 1 Corinthians was written. So you can go and talk to them and say, did you really see Jesus rise from the dead? And they say, yes, I did. Normally we talk about that, but here it sounded a bit convoluted, but let's quickly unpack it. Because the Apostle Paul says, the sting of death is sin. That selfishness, those deep-seated wrong attitudes, that brokenness inside us leads us to spiritual death. And it's that perishableness, that mortality that afflicts us all, no matter who we are. So how is it that we can be raised imperishable? How is it that we shall be clothed with immortality? Well, the resurrection which we celebrate today stands at the center of all human history because it's God's verdict on Good Friday, on Jesus' saving work on the cross. It's God's Amen saying that that, through that historical event, what Jesus did there is sufficient for every human being that has ever lived and that will ever live, for all of us to have complete assurance that he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the kind of joy and wonder that we celebrate today is not a feeble, 
sort of fleeting thing found by ignoring the reality of life and the pain and the grief that we see around us. It is a joy that we find by looking death squarely in the face and knowing that its power is broken. Just as Jesus came back from the dead, he can come back and get us back from the dead and bring us through into eternal life, which is life with him in all its fullness. So that we can say to all the darkness around us, O oh death, where is your sting? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, fill us with the resurrection life of Jesus. Thank you. The book of Romans tells us that the very power that raised Jesus from the dead can be at work in us. And we pray that he, the Holy Spirit, who brings that power, would bring us a power that is not selfish, but selfless, a power that brings the hope that we need, the hope that brings us to act in ways that can transform our lives and the lives of those around us. So fill us afresh this Easter with resurrection life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to um, spend a bit of time now. Liz Rogers is going to lead us in our prayers for a pained and suffering world. But let's, uh, let's really just quieten our hearts and come and pray. Good morning. The response this morning to Lord hear us is Lord graciously hear us. Lord on this Easter morning we come to you in prayer rejoicing as always in your resurrection. That This year we are in very new uncertain and uncharted times but we must never forget that you are always with us. So let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. We pray for all those who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are guiding the nations of the world at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions which will help us to come back out into the light again. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, medical researchers and all members of the NHS, we pray that through their skills and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the key workers, carers, supermarket and pharmacy staff, transport workers, teachers, ambulance and fire crews, the military, volunteers and so many others. We thank you for them and the vital jobs they are doing to keep us all going through these dark days. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill, and the dying, that they may know your comfort and grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for all the situations and problems that still happen around the world despite coronavirus. War, famine, persecution, abuse. And we pray for those closer to home who are awaiting surgery, or some sort of treatment like chemotherapy, which are now in jeopardy. We bring all of these before you, Lord, and ask for your protection for all affected, that they may feel your loving presence and arms around them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, at Easter, we remember what you did for us. And today we hold on to the thought that when everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. 
the sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. And we pray that the Easter light of life, hope and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Amen. Thank you, Liz, for those prayers. Well, over the last few weeks, we've had to stop doing the peace, and some people will have loved that. Some people have been very sad about it. But um, there is one way in which we can still share the peace, so I've put it back in. And I thought what would be great is if, during the next few minutes while we're <laughs> playing some music, um, maybe you could just send a few uh, greetings by email or text or WhatsApp, whatever it is, but just send that Easter greeting. Happy Easter. Peace be with you uh, to a few folk uh, that uh, might need it at this time or just family, family and friends. Uh, but let's just spend a few moments fiercely texting or, uh, or, or emailing over the next few moments as we greet people and give them that Easter greeting. Well, now we come to our communion. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word, 
Through him you've created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you've freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. And through him you've sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us all a people for your own possession. But chiefly we are bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life he has restored to us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, as we follow his example and obey his command, grant by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us wherever we are, his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once and for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so accept through him our great high priest. This, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So wherever you are this morning, just take a moment of quiet to draw near with your faith. Receive spiritually the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. In that way, eat and drink in remembrance in your hearts that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
And so we sing our final song, which is uh, In Christ Alone. Let's sing together of that great Easter hope. Well, as we close our Easter Day service together, let's have a final prayer together. 
May God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and all those that we love now and always. Amen. Happy Easter to you all. In Christ alone.